When the goal of organic chemistry is to synthesize a particular product or target molecule, it's very useful to first recognize what functional groups are present and how those functional groups are related to one another. If we start with our target and think backwards on how that synthesis might be achieved, this is the process of retrosynthesis or reverse synthesis, looking at the target and trying to recognize what starting materials might be used and what reactions might be used in order to achieve that target synthesis. I'd like to conclude the section on carbonyl chemistry by taking a look at some of the different functional group relationships that we've seen and the kind of chemistry that might be used in the forward direction to achieve the target molecule. So here are six different functional group relationships that we've uncovered during our study of the carbonyl chemistry. And so in the first case, what we can see is a pair of carbonyl groups, and those carbonyl groups are separated by five atoms. And so we should be thinking when we see that functional group relationship of the Michael reaction in which we would do the addition to a conjugated double bond and so the alpha carbon of this carbonyl would serve as the nucleophile. The new carbon-carbon bond would be the carbon-carbon bond that's made here, separated by this dashed line. And the positions on the other side of that line would have been the unsaturated alpha-beta carbon-carbon double bond of the Michael acceptor. In the next case, we have a beta hydroxy carbonyl. The hydroxy group is in the beta position. There's the alpha position to this carbonyl. And that functional group relationship would be defined in the synthesis direction by the aldol reaction. And so this would have been the alpha nucleophile, and this would have been a carbonyl carbon. The third case is taking that aldol reaction and doing a dehydration across the new bond that's formed. If we lose the elements of water, we generate this new alpha-beta carbon-carbon double bond. So this is an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl, and it would have come about by taking that aldol reaction and going further and doing the dehydration. So the net result, aldol plus dehydration, is known as the aldol condensation, and it would have been this carbon-carbon bond that in the retrosynthetic direction we would have thought about disconnecting in order to make the starting materials that would be on either side of that. In the next case, we have a 1,3 dicarbonyl relationship, and we learned that that could be achieved by the Claisen condensation. And so the new bond that would have been formed would have been between the alpha carbon here and the carbonyl that used to have an alkoxide group on that ester. So in our product, if we saw that 1,3 dicarbonyl relationship, we could have thought about using the Claisen condensation with two partners, one on the left and the other on the right. In the next example, we just have a carbonyl group, and we learned that if that was a methyl ketone, that methyl ketone could have been achieved by the acetoacetic acid synthesis in which there would have been a new carbon bond between the alpha carbon of the carbonyl, which at one point bore a carboxylic acid or ester, and that alkyl group R that would have been made by an alkylation reaction. And finally, in the last example, we learned about the malonic acid synthesis, and again by a decarboxylation that would have involved a carboxylic acid group bound to that alpha carbon, we would have been through the alkylation process been able to achieve the carbon R group bond that's shown there. So in all six of these cases now, we've seen how we can put our knowledge of functional group relationships to use in order to synthesize the various carbonyl compounds as you can see here.